So I've been scrolling through YouTube and I keep seeing videos of people talking about the economy crashing and the dollar crashing. And it got me thinking, what would actually happen to our debts if the dollar crashed tomorrow by let's say 50%? How would this affect us? And would this be completely bad or is there some good in this? Now, I did a lot of research and I found some really interesting stuff. So for example, I found out that in 2023, these are the statistics, credit cards or Americans have around $986 billion in credit card debt on average. Now, if we go down here, we can actually find a map and this is uh, the average credit card debt across the US by state. So for example, in Florida, the average credit card debt is $8,500. In Texas, it's $8,700. In New York, it's around $9,100. And also, this was the most shocking piece of information that I found. And now, in the first quarter of 2023, the average APR on a credit card was 20.09%. However, today, that average has gone up to 23.84%. So in just about five months, credit card or the average APR on a credit card has gone up by almost 4%. So what is going to happen to all this debt if the dollar actually crashes? Now, this video is not to tell you that the dollar is going to crash, but it's to simply explore what would happen if that were to be the case. Now, this is a graph of the total outstanding credit card balances from 2008 to present. And as you can see here, credit card debt has been going up and this is in the billions. Now, a lot of people are being forced into credit card debt because of inflation and wages not keeping up with inflation. And so they need credit cards just to be able to afford the necessities, right? So buying groceries, buying fuel, commuting to work, these charges or these costs are being put on credit cards because people simply can't afford to do this without credit cards anymore. Now, I did some research and actually took some notes for this video. So if you guys appreciate the free content, give the video a thumbs up. That is completely free. It won't cost you anything. I'll also really appreciate it. Also, I want you guys to comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on this. Let me know if you agree with me or if you disagree with me. Share your perspective as well. And also, guys, if you want to keep seeing videos like this, then be sure to subscribe to the channel with the notifications on and that way you'll always get the updates of when I post new videos on this channel. Also, if you ever want to talk to me one on one, you can message me on Instagram. I'm leaving the link down below in the description or here on the screen. Well, that said, let's jump right into this video. So the first thing that I want to talk about is your fixed rate debt. And I'm going to go through all the most common types of debt that people have, but I'm going to kind of go from the good all the way to the doom and gloom stuff. So stick around for that. Now for fixed rate debts, you could actually benefit. Now, I know this is probably not what you want to hear. And you're saying, Ian, you've gone completely crazy. There's no way I could benefit from this, but just hear me out. So if you have fixed rate debt, for example, a mortgage, and this fixed rate debt is on an asset, then in future dollars, it's going to be easier for you to service this debt. Now, this is because this debt is based on a contract where you have to pay a certain fixed amount of dollars per month or per year, and you also have a fixed interest rate. So this could be like your conventional mortgage or your FHA mortgage, and you have a fixed payment for the next 30 years. So today, if your mortgage is $2,000 per month and you need to work 40 hours per week, and you also need to do a side hustle or a second job just to make ends meet and to pay for this mortgage in five to 10 years from now with inflation increasing and also the wages that you earn also slightly increasing, it's going to cost you less hours and a less amount of work for you to actually service this debt. So instead of working 40 hours at your day job and then working 20 hours at your night job five to 10 years from now, you may be able to get away with just doing some side gig or some side hustle. And that could possibly be good enough for you to make the payments on your mortgage. Now, if you're saying that you're not going to be getting a salary increase, think about it this way. As inflation goes up, wages tend to go up as well, and they may not go up as fast or as much as with inflation, but they do go up because people will be demanding higher salaries and higher wages as inflation goes up. So think about this scenario, right? Let's say today it costs you $5 to buy a dozen eggs. In five years from now, if inflation keeps going up and it costs you $10 to purchase the same one dozen eggs, then you and just about everyone else around you are going to start demanding higher wages because the wage that they currently earn isn't enough to pay for these necessities. So wages will keep going up 
but they may not go up by a lot, but they'll still keep going up. So if you have a fixed debt with a fixed interest rate, then it's kind of to your advantage because you're gonna be working less to service that same debt. Now, in the case of you having like a mortgage, this is also good because this is an asset that usually appreciates or increases in value. I think on average, uh, real estate appreciates by around 3% per year. So here you're actually getting a win on both ends because while it's becoming easier for you to service this debt, you also benefit from this property appreciating in value. So the value of your asset is going up and you're working less hours to service the debt for that asset. And so it's kind of like a win-win. Now I did a lot of research and unfortunately this was the only way that I could find where the dollar crashing or inflation going up could actually benefit you. For everything else on this list that we're gonna talk about is actually not going to benefit you and actually could crush you or completely destroy you financially. So the next thing that I wanna talk about is also fixed rate debt, but this is going to be debt on things that aren't assets or even if it's assets, it's not going to be assets that appreciate in value. And so a lot of people have car notes, right? Now, cars do not go up in value, at least not usually, they go down in value. And so if you pay for a brand new car today, while it's similar to the mortgage where you have a fixed interest rate and you have a fixed payment for the duration of that loan, what is gonna happen is that that car is going to depreciate and you could say, well, Ian, I'm gonna keep this car forever, but you can't actually keep a car forever because this car is gonna be worn down, it's gonna need a new engine, it's gonna get dinged up. So at some point in time, you are going to need to repair or most likely replace this car. Now, because of this, you're going to finish paying for this car and then you're gonna be right back at square one where you have to go out here, you will have to purchase a new car. It's probably gonna cost you twice as much to buy this new car. And then you're going to have to make even higher higher payments for the next several years while you have this new car. So for fixed interest debt like car notes, it's kind of like neutral because you're not really using because you're getting value from the car and you can possibly keep it for a long time to extract as much value as you possibly can. But eventually you are going to need to replace this car and you're going to be right back at square one where you have to work all these hours just to make the payments on this new car, which is going to be priced at a much higher cost than the car that you currently have that you're making payments on today. Now, the next type of debt that I wanna talk about is going to be credit card debt. And this is the one that will completely destroy you financially if you have a lot of credit card debt. Now, let's talk a bit about how credit cards work. So let's say I'm a credit card company, you're looking for a credit card, I give you a credit card, there's a $10,000 limit on there, you use that credit card and you're gonna pay me back over the period of one year. Now, if the current inflation rate is 10%, then I can't give you this credit card and I can't allow you to pay me just 10% in interest or give you an APR of 10% because then I'd essentially just be breaking even because it's gonna take you a year to pay me back. And in next year dollars, then 10% is only going to break even for me. So I have to think about this and I have to say, well, I need to give you an APR of 25% because 10% is just going to be for inflation. And then the next 15% is going to be my reward for actually loaning you this money. Now, as interest rates keep on climbing, or inflation rather, as inflation keeps on climbing, then I will also need to adjust this APR or the interest on this credit card to make sure that I'm benefiting from lending out this money. Because if I don't, then I'm gonna end up losing because all I'm gonna be doing is giving you this money, you're paying interest, but in next year dollars or whenever you do pay off this debt, I'm just breaking even. So this is one of the reasons why credit cards have this variable rate interest, and this is why it keeps changing, and this is why in 2023, in just about five months, the average APR on a credit card has gone up by about 4%. So because inflation keeps on going up, the APR on these credit cards are gonna keep on going up, and so every single month, your monthly payment is going to be higher and higher. And so essentially what's going to happen is you'll no longer be able to afford or to be able to pay off this debt because you earn the same amount of money, your money has lost 50% or whatever percentage off its value, you're making the same amount of money, inflation is going up, your credit card interest is going up, and essentially, you'll never be able to pay this debt off. So if you were wondering what is potentially gonna happen to your debts if the dollar crashes, and if inflation keeps on going up, then these are the possible scenarios, right? So if you have a fixed rate debt on a asset that appreciates in value, 
then you'll actually be win-win or it'll be a win-win for you. However, if you have fixed rate debt on you know assets that decrease in value or fixed rate debt on things that aren't assets, then it's kind of neutral or you still losing some money. But if you have credit card debt or you have any type of debt that has a variable interest rate or variable APR, then this is where you're going to be financially crushed. So what you could do or what you should try to do now is to get rid of all credit card debt if you think or if you believe that the dollar is in fact going to crash soon and if you think we're going to be experiencing hyperinflation. Now, I don't know if any of these things are gonna happen, but this video was just to explore the possible outcomes or the possibilities of what could happen to your debt if this was to happen. So comment down below, let me know what you guys think about this. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with any of the points that I've made? And with that said, all the best and I'll see you guys very soon in the next one.